You're listening to the Vibrant Happy Women podcast, episode number 191. We're talking about anxiety and creativity. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dr. Jen Ryday, former burned out mom of six turned happiness whisperer. And I'm here to help you get off that hamster wheel and make time for yourself without the guilt so you can live a balanced, calm, heart-centered life. With over 2.5 million downloads, this is the Vibrant Happy Women Podcast. Hey friends, Jen here, and welcome back to Vibrant Happy Women. I'm proud to be talking with one of my friends, Amber Fife, today. She's going to be talking to us about anxiety, which is one of the thorns in her life that she has had the privilege to struggle with. I think we all have thorns we face, whether that be a difficult marriage or a financial problem or a health problem. We all have them and they help us to have contrast, to see what we like and don't like and to know clearly what we want and to go after it. Well, Amber has found a tool that helps her with her anxiety, one of many. And this tool is to create, to be creative. She has found that it is super, super helpful. So you're going to hear about creativity and anxiety throughout this episode. My guest today is Amber Fife, and she is a creative woman with degrees in math and art. She has enjoyed being a photographer for the last 13 years while simultaneously raising her four <laughs> children. In 2018, she returned to her artistic roots and began another business to lead women to create with a blog and online art membership. Amber lives on four acres of woods in South Jersey with her homesteading professor husband and four kids. For fun, Amber loves to listen to business podcasts, journal, have heart to heart conversations with girlfriends, and of course, create. I love that, Amber. Welcome to Vibrant Happy Women. Thank you. Well, you want to tell them how we know each other, Amber? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember how I first stumbled upon your podcast, but you did a, a time mastery webinar that I listened to thoroughly and got so much goodness out of it. Didn't sign up at the time, but a few months later in December of 2017, um, you did one about starting a business and I've run a business for a decade, but I wanted to start a new business and I loved everything that you shared and, um, so I signed up for your Vibrant Happy Business Builder course, and mm. it's it was meant to be. Cool. And now we're friends, and yes. it's so fun. And you were in Africa, right, when you heard about it? Yes. I think I remember that. Yeah, that's yep. cool. That's cool. <laughs> well, welcome. What is the quote you want to share with us today? Um, my favorite quote is one from my college years, and I went to go fig figure out who it was, and there's a number of people who have used it in their books and stuff, so I don't know where it originated. But the quote is, all you can do is all you can do, and all you can do is enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the stressfulness of my you know, college days with papers and assignments and that sort of thing, um, that was a good reminder to me that what I can do is all that I can do and it's enough because yes which applies today as a mom because there's so much things so many things you can spend your time on from housekeeping and to efforts outside your home and with your kids activities there's so much you can do and you have to be able to set that limit for yourself and and knowing that that's enough mm -hmm. for sure I like it kind of reminds me of a quote I like where it's not really a quote, it's a concept <laughs> that that 80% is good enough. It's okay to do B, B plus work <laughs> yes, or, or B minus work, whatever. Not shooting for that A because that A is so paralyzing. So, Well, that's what I, you know, in high school, I'd get a 98 on a test and I was like, what two points did I miss? Yeah. And I was so obsessed with perfection. And um, I think that'll come up later today in our discussion of I'm a recovering perfectionist and it feels so good <laughs> to be recovering and not stuck in it anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. Well, take us back to your low point, whatever low point you're going to share with us today. Um, the low point I chose um, to share about was um, the move here to New Jersey. So three years ago, my husband and my whole family, we moved cross country um, and it was the third time I'd have, I had to grow my business, my photography business. Um, 
initially and then the second relocation. And I knew that would take some time. Um, and so I decided to try my hand at homeschooling. Um, it was my first break from photography in 10 years. I'd always say that I would take a break for like a month and then somebody would say, please take my photos. And I, of course, wanted to help them. So this is the first time I'd actually taken a full break. And the first few months was amazing. It was like, we're on vacation, we're having fun and we're learning. And then come February, this would be February of 2017, I was like, I had an identity crisis. I was like, who am I? Because I defined myself, I'm a photographer, I'm a mom, I'm a such and such. And it was such a part of me, um, of how I viewed myself and my succeeding in life by people throwing money at me and telling me how wonderful I was. And, mm-hmm. um, and so it was a big shift for me to have to look inside myself for that validation. And I, it was hard to do that. Um, I missed my like deep, authentic friendships. Um, I was around my kids for 24-7 for the first time in my life. <laughs> and I I never was the mom who cried when their kids went to school. I was like, bye, see ya, <laughs> yeah. have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and so like that was just a big change for me. And I also had like chronic anxiety over the years. Um, I can first recall like my freshman year of college. I'm sure I had it some before then. Um and that just kind of came to the forefront when I didn't have all the distraction of photography clients to serve and bless. So I had to like deal with it. And it, and I, I hesitated to share this as my low point because on paper, it doesn't look that bad. It's not, it's kind of vanilla, but it felt real and it felt crippling. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I tried, uh, I did a, a number of different things. Um, I tried to do medication. A couple of years ago, I tried some kind of like allergy medicine that was stronger just to think if, if I could sleep well, then I won't feel anxiety during the day because I'll sleep better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I tried some actual anxiety medication. The first one didn't do anything really for me. And then the second one, my nurse um, switched me cold turkey and I was like down on the couch for like two days, like out of commission completely. Wow. And it, it was like I was hit with a freight train. It was I, – I gained a new appreciation for people changing their medications and having to adjust the dosages and that sort of thing. And I think in hindsight, she should have like had me wait, wean off <laughs> and on yeah. between the two medica- medicines. Um, but as that started to even out, um, the biggest help for me was the tightness of my stomach. It just felt like my stomach was in knots all the time mm. with my anxiety. Everybody's anxiety has a different flavor to it. Um and that really helped. Um, eventually, um, I don't remember how long I was on that, uh, maybe about a year. Um, I ended up doing a month of no sweets and accidentally forgot to take the medicine. And after like the third or fourth day, I reckon, I realized that I hadn't been taking it and I felt just as good as I did before. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I haven't been taking it ever since. And um, it's neat that all the work that I've done for self-improvement and changing my negative inner voice and that sort of thing, um, I can get to that same kind of Zen feeling with my body without the medic- medication. But I think it was for sure needed. And I think sometimes your brain just needs a kickstart to kind of get back on track and have good, you know, good pathways and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I did, a, I read a lot of books. I did an emotional intelligence conference. Um, I, at that conference, like people were coming with their visions and one person's was helping troubled youth to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Hmm. And I planned to be a better businesswoman, better photographer is the reason why I went to that conference. And I realized my vision is I have to love myself. And I was like, but that's so lame. It's not like, it's, it's so, it's not flashy, (laughs) but coming to that point, it just unlocked everything. And it helped me to change that ne- negative inner voice and that trickled out to all kinds of things. Um, so I, I did a lot of internal personal work, um, journaling and that sort of thing, um, taking time to create. So in about March of 2017, I started creating on a regular basis and that kind of healed myself um, mm-hmm. by taking that time to create and to make time and not not to show or to sell or anything, but just to heal and to um, 
kind of find myself again. What do you what do you think it is about creating that is so healing for you personally? Or maybe all women, I don't know. Yeah. Um there's a quote um from Julia Cameron um and she says creative creativity is oxygen for our souls. And I think when I'm making time to create, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, it clears my mind. Mhm. And that when I can clear my mind, then um, with that clear mind, you have that room for growth automatically. You start mm-hmm. to grow emotionally, spiritually, mentally. Um, and there's a reward when you make something, you have the physical reward of what you made, even if it's not amazing. <laughs> um, but you have this manifestation, manif- physical manifestation of an inward commitment to yourself Mm -hmm. saying Mm -hmm. that I'm important. I deserve this time to be with myself and to work on this, whatever that is. And maybe that's cleaning a corner of your house and maybe that's purging some shelves that you want to go through to to when to, so when you open the closet, it's all organized and beautiful. It doesn't have to be making actual art. Um, but I think it clears your mind. It helps you grow and it, um, it trickles into everything. Like mm-hmm. I'm a happier mom. I'm a more loving spouse. Um, it it kind of becomes the lifeblood of life because you're creating, you're continuing yeah. to create this life that you love. Yeah. I recently, maybe a few weeks back, I interviewed um, Heather Ashamara. So she's the author of The Warrior Goddess Training. And um, her book is essentially about masculine and feminine energy. And of course, every human male and female, we all have both energies. She was saying how in our world today, everyone is heavily in their warrior energy or the masculine energy. And as we shift and spend some more time in our goddess energy, or that's her word for the feminine energy, it's uh, more of a creative energy, a healing energy. And it makes sense exactly what you're saying. That act of creative action, the act of creativity is is a goddess slash yeah. feminine energy and it's, it's healing and nurturing and we just need more of it. I think our, our bodies and souls are crying out for it. So that's why I, I love what you're doing with, um, your women create weekly membership. Tell us more about that and how you're trying to expand that act of creation. So other women can heal in the same way. I would love to. It's funny because having been in the photography industry for 13 years, it's, it's, pretty masculine in the energy in that you're going and you're pushing and you're, and it's just that feeling of rush and pursue and perform. Um, and while during that time I wanted to create. And so now that I'm actually creating it again, it's a really nice balance so that I can enjoy the aspects of photography that I still get to do, but I don't have that, that rush and that energy and that uh, anxiety surrounding that. And, um, one year ago, like this week, I launched, um, women create weekly where we get to create together on a weekly basis. Mm. And, um, every month we have a new project every quarter. It's a new art medium. So you get a lot of exposure to a lot of things. And it's super exciting to see, um, these women who haven't had formal art training maybe since, you know, high school or middle school coming and being really vulnerable and learning and trying. And we do these, these projects. So every month we have a new project every week we have live instruction face to face virtually. Um, and we have a mantra with a little coloring card that you get in the mail every month. And we discuss about these things about how to better our lives and how to support each other and things we're experiencing. And so it's been really neat to have um, created this community of people that are wanting to bring their hearts together to create and to learn new things and to bless their families. Um, I've had um, some of the members have worked with their kids on the projects. And so they've learned it themselves. And now they get to go and work on it with their children and be like, think of that kind of experience because a lot of, there's a lot of um, art classes for kids and a lot of moms will put their kids in art classes, mm-hmm. but not a, not a lot of moms will 
find an experience on a regular basis to do art. They might mm-hmm. do like a one night paint and palette night kind of thing, right. but they're not going to do that on a regular basis. And it's mm-hmm. so, so necessary for your soul to be creating on a regular basis. And so I love that these moms are taking it to their kid, children and having that experience with their children. I grew up with my mom doing art of all forms with us and just showing how you can think outside the box and explore and, and be curious. And, and what if I do this? What if I do that? And um, I just think it's great that it's helping them and their families and helping them in um, like even after the first few weeks, one of the moms made a banner for a child's birthday um, just with some of the simple lettering stuff that we'd begun learning. And mm-hmm. she's like, I made that. I made that. And it's just exciting that it's helping people's lives in so many ways that I didn't even anticipate. Yeah. And to have that beauty, you know, we get so practical sometimes trying to, to knock out our to-do lists, but just beauty and creation and the pride that, that you mentioned, I think that's amazing. So what are some of the projects you've done? I know, I know you did quilling and I was so jealous. And if everyone, if you don't know what quilling is, it's, I hope I say this right. Well, you just tell us, Amber, what's quilling? (laughs) Quilling is taking long strips of paper and you can curl it, bend it, and then glue it in some way. So um, we made it last December, we made a quilling Christmas piece that had some um, handwritten words and then some words that were quilled. And so it kind of popped out from the page a little bit and it's really pretty. Um, in February, we did, we revisited quilling a little bit and we made a cool um, pendant, a heart pendant um, as jewelry mm-hmm. and, and a snowflake pendant back in December. So there's so many things you can do with quilling. It's, it's quite simple, um, but it's fun to get ideas from each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so quilling is one of the things that super easy, easy to get started. Um, you can even cut your own paper at home and, you know, use your finger. You don't have to have all of the tools, but the Mm -hmm. tools do help. Mm -hmm. In, uh, January of last year, we made a watercolor calendar. And so they used, um, uh, my free printable, which your listeners are welcome to have, um, to choose a word for, um, of intention for the year. And there's some things that go into choosing that to kind of guide your year. I've done it for five years now, and mm-hmm. it, it really makes a huge difference. And so where, where would we get that? So a word of um, the year printable? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, cool. Um, if, if you want to go to womencreateweekly.com forward slash word, W-O-R-D. W-O-R-D. Um, hey, everyone, go <laughs> get it. And what do we do with it once we get it? We're going to be painting it? Um, this is a, a multiple page worksheet that helps you kind of decide what you want to do for choosing your word of the year. Oh, um, nice. And it's a couple of different activities in that worksheet. Um, and then, so in January of last year, everyone took the word that they'd chosen and we made a watercolor calendar out of it. And each week I would teach them different watercolor techniques. And then I had a principal with the actual cutouts of the month dates and so by the end of the month, they had a whole calendar for the entire year um, just to hang up next to their bed. And um, so that's, that's one of the really one of the cool. That's got to be really satisfying. It and really I, is because you you see this, this thing you've made all year long and you sw- switch the month when the month is over. And it's like, oh, I remember that one. And it's your word to remind you, you know, to reassess and say, where am I at with my word that guides you yeah. through the year? And what I like about what you're doing, so much of modern day art, quote unquote, has been watered down a little. I'm not criticizing it necessarily. Just what I think is we have kits for everything and you do the kit and you make it look like the picture and voila, you're done. Wow, we did art. But I like how yours goes a bit deeper and kind of getting more in touch with your own psyche and letting it come out in the art and it's not prescribed, but you're there as a guide. I think that's really, really cool and important to do art in that way too. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's a place for imitation and I guess some elements of what we do is imitation. Um, but I like, for example, this month we just did, um, um, a wooden plaque of whatever lettering people wanted to do. And so everyone chose a quote that means something to them. And then I helped step everybody through how they can block out their, their 
quote and what kind of different text they could use and, you know, gave them like five or six thumbnails for each of their quotes of how they wanted to lay it out. And then they got to lay it out. I showed them how to enlarge it to do real size and how to transfer that. And we did that all step by step together. Um, and so by the end of it, everyone has this beautiful plaque that can sit on their wall or on their piano um, of this art that they made and their children can see this art that mom made in their home. Mm-hmm. And that's what I had growing up and seeing this beautiful art that my mom made. And it showed me she cared about our family. She cared about the beauty of our home. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just something kind of special. Wow. I want to care about my home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. Jen. I know, I know. But I'm like, oh, I need to create. Well, if someone listening knows that number one, they need to take better care of themselves, take time for themselves. And number two, they think they would like to do that through the medium of creating, maybe with you, where could they go to learn more about Women Create Weekly? I would love them to come check out my website, womencreateweekly.com forward slash join. That will tell them all about the the membership and um, show them examples of the projects that we've done. But yeah, we have a, a Facebook group um, for those that are on Facebook. Some of the women that I are in my group prefer to spend time off of social media. And so they get the links through their email and it all, all that works there. So, and the, the class, the live classes, yeah, the, the live classes um, and then the replays. So if you're not able to join live, you can still watch the replay. Um, if you do turn in live, tune in live, then I can um, ask like, show me this part and I give you suggestions, um, whether it's a spilled paint in one spot and how do you, how do you deal with that problem? Or, um, I'm, I can't get this letter form exactly right. And, oh, push down more with your brush at the first and then pull it up here. And, and I can give you like specialized responses. That's cool. It's like, uh, it's like art group coaching. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's basically what it is. That's really There's a little neat. personal development in there as well. <laughs> Um, and every month I give links to all of the products that we'll be using. You're welcome to, you know, if you already have stuff that works that you already own, that's fine. Um, but they're Amazon links, um, a boxed kit. Um, they've become quite popular in the last few years. Yeah, that's easy. Perfect. It's, it's been a wonderful learning journey to help to serve women. And I every time I get off the call, I just feel just want to run laps around my house. I'm so like excited. It just makes me so happy to, to help women and to connect in this way. That's so cool. You're living your purpose and it, it's fulfilling and exciting. That's a good sign that you're on track because it feels so good to you. Well, thank you for living your purpose, Amber. I love that you're creating and I love that you're part of that movement to help women slow down and connect to themselves and shift into that feminine goddess creative energy so awesome work let's have a break for our sponsor and come back to talk about your favorite things today's episode is sponsored by osea malibu the original plant-based results-driven skincare line osea puts your health and the health of our planet first with potent skin and body care solutions that are pure safe and effective Each product is infused with sustainably sourced organic Patagonian seaweed and active botanicals that create a nutrient and mineral-rich bioavailable base for your skin. If you're in the LA area, stop by the Osea Venice Skincare Studio and bring forth your inner glow. With personal skin consultations, customized facials, and in-house expert estheticians, stop in to speak with an Osea specialist about the best products for you and your long-term skin health. I truly believe Osea is superfood for your skin. I love this product and I'm so glad I have gotten to try it. I will keep using it for a very long time. Well, you can get $10 off your first purchase of $50 by going to oseamalibu.com slash vibrant happy women. That's O S E A Malibu dot com slash vibrant happy women to get ten dollars off your first purchase of fifty dollars. Okay, welcome back, Amber. I would love to hear about the juggle, and maybe it's not a juggle for you, the juggle of being a mom who homeschools and does photography and runs women create weekly. That's pretty amazing. Tell us how 
you found any tips you have for being able to maybe not balance, but just uh, dance with all of the fun responsibilities you have. I like that idea of dancing because that's, that's what it is. It's all a dance. Um, sometimes it's heavy on one and sometimes it's heavy on another. Um, I was shooting a wedding uh, weekend before last in Oklahoma where I used to live, where we moved from. And I had some other sh- sessions there as well, as well as some sessions the weeks before that. And so when I got back from that, my mom was still in town and I basically locked myself in my office for two days straight to do all the editing and, um, which wouldn't have been able to happen if she wasn't in town helping the kids do their homeschool and not kill each other. Mm-hmm. And yesterday, instead of send out the email to my, um, email list, um, that I usually send out on Mondays, um, I was homeschooling and being with my kids and connecting and feeling, I did a lot of, of purging and cleaning and just was present with my family and those needs. And so I think, um, one thing that's really helped me is to schedule things out, to know when I need to do things and um, knowing when those pockets of time are flexible and to be able to use those flexible pockets of time. I'm, I'm, I think I'm like a type one energy if you do that kind of energy profiling or whatever. Um, and so I kind of like to shift and be flexible, um, which, which means sometimes you put your needs on the very back burner, being flexible for everybody else. Mm-hmm. And so one thing that I need to, that I've started to do is, um, to exercise every morning. Um, so I, I try to get up at like five thirty. with traveling. It's been a little bit, um, tricky, but, um, getting up at five thirty and having, um, free time. So if I want to journal longer or meditate longer or however I want to use that first bit of time, um, I can do that. Um, if I feel like scrolling Facebook, then I can do that too. Um, mm-hmm. but then at six o'clock I can exercise for half an hour. And my favorite is, um, doing like bar workouts. There's so many exercise videos on YouTube. My favorite way to exercise is whatever I don't have to think about. So I loved going to group classes when I had a gym membership and, um, it doesn't work out for us right now. Um, but I realized there's so many classes on YouTube, um, to exercise too. And then, um, my husband actually uh, manages the kids until 9am when he goes to work. Nice. So he's a, he's a professor. Um, it's <laughs> great. Yes. And so he, his schedule is fairly flexible, um, unless he has a class to teach in the morning. And so he helps them, um, get their jobs done, their house chores done. So by the time I come out at nine, I've already had time, um, out to myself. I've gotten some big things done, um, for work. And, um, most of the time I've, I've showered and had breakfast somewhere in there as well. And so I come out at nine o'clock to do homeschooling and the house is clean and the kids are just playing and I already feel like I've accomplished. So that's my current way to handle life is I get the whole morning to myself. Mm, that's great and smart. And I like how you create pockets. So many times we think it has to be the same every day and consistent. And I work this hour, these hours, and I cook at this time and I do my laundry here, but it's okay to, to do different things. I mean, when athletes are training for an event, they totally mix up their workouts. So shouldn't we live life the same way? And you're a good example of that. That's so cool. Thank you. I don't do well on keeping exact routine very often. So it's, <laughs> it's playing on my strengths instead of my weaknesses there. Yeah. And you know, I, I always often think about Gretchen Rubin's four tendencies. I think there's a certain type of person that does thrive on that consistency every day, but I think you and I need that variety. I have, mm-hmm. I'm a secondary type one. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, we're talking about dressing your truth from Carol Tuttle. And she was a guest on episode 137. And she didn't talk about dressing your truth in that episode, but um, she's the author of it. Anyway, <laughs> Amber, I wanted to tell you, I'm a type three one. So I, I get you this need to have variety. Yeah. The one, the ones like variety. So <laughs> Anyone else out there listening? Sorry, go read the book, Dressing Your Truth. (laughs) Okay, now, Amber, tell us about listening to your intuition and knowing what choices to make when the choices are tough or easy or moving or staying or homeschooling or businesses and all the things you've had to decide in your life. 
what what guides you? How do you know what's right? I believe in God and that he has a path for us and wh- however that translates into, you know, the universe and your path and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm just going to use God because that's what I'm comfortable using. Um, I want to kind of fulfill what I need, what I was put on earth to do. And that looks different for different parts of my life. And um, I remember being a teenager and and wanting to serve my friends and help them because they were having hard days. And in college, uh, wanting to get enough tools in my toolbox to be able to be a good citizen and daughter of God and to do good in the world. And so that meant I added an extra major. So I did math and visual, visual arts um, and uh, married the two with photography and with photography, creating images that will bless generations to come and seeking to edit my photos in a way that are timeless so that it looks good no matter when you're going to look at it. And um, I think sometimes that striving to be, um, to follow your intuition can be a little bit paralyzing at times because you're so intent on what's the best step that you don't think what's the next step and just progressing along in your journey. Mm -hmm. And so I think doing Women Create Weekly has been, I think, the best thing for me because number one, I've had to see myself on camera with this weight that I've gained, um, with my low point being here, you know, eating emotions, um, and seeing myself with increased, you know, weight gain and, uh, been awkward at times and that sort of thing. And so seeing myself in videos and having to edit that has helped me to just love and accept myself more. And as I'm doing things that are hard, um, and a little bit scary sometimes. Um, it's I've grown to appreciate and love myself more. I think there's a desire to to serve. I guess is the underlying motivation to serve God, to serve uh, my friends, to serve my family. And when you come to life with that kind of feeling, you're going to be operating out of love. Yeah. So. Your guiding principle is to serve and help and do good and and be a good friend. And I think you are that. I, I like that about you. Thank you. Thank That's you. Awesome. And so let's do favorite things. Favorite book. I have two favorite books. Is that allowed? Yes. <laughs> uh, the first one has been mentioned many times in your podcast. Um, it's Big Magic, um, Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, I listened to that in audio book first, then I got the ebook and then I got the physical book because I just loved it. Mm, definitely um, one of the most important books <laughs> I've ever read for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, and the second one is Artist Way, The Artist Way. And that's mm-hmm. uh, by Julia Cameron. And um, that's, you know, I think it's been around for over 25 years. It's it's quite an old book, but it's still so good. You know, when I read The Artist Way, I was really surprised that 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 I thought <laughs> the concepts in her book are things we were only talking about in modern day times. I was really surprised to think that people were talking about the same things, you know, 25, 30 years ago when it was written. Mm-hmm. So it is. It's timeless. <laughs> it's it's like, wow, I thought we were different than back then, but I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because I haven't read it cover to cover. I've read portions of it um, mm-hmm. over and over, some portions of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we pull the things that we need to hear. Um, but one thing, so earlier today, I was thumbing through the book and um, two phrases that popped out to me were that we need to begin to treat ourselves more gently and that we need creative solitude and healing time alone. And the thing that I love about that is that, like, we need to create not just, like, if you're going to a palette night with a friend and you make the same painting everybody in the room makes and you're concerned about, does this look good? Does it look like theirs? And is it, you're worried about that. But when you're creating and not worrying about comparison, you find these little happy 
accidents and happy little trees. Bob yeah. Ross. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I had to say it. And it's Go when on. We, we get too busy to allow ourselves mm-hmm. that creative space. Uh, we lose that opportunity for clarity. You know, so true. It's again, shifting into a different energy. That's not just hustle and, and drive, but space. Yeah. 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 Wow. I'm going to go read that again. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Favorite happiness tool. Um, it's related to, to things that have been shared on your podcast, um, but I just call it body check. Mm-hmm. And so I stop and check my body and I ask myself, where am I feeling tension? Because tension is my biggest uh, symptom that other people might have other kind of emotions, but tension is my uh, a kryptonite. Mm-hmm. So it, like before, like I talked about earlier about with medication that helped me like this tightness in my stomach kind of learn to chill out. And with that gone, I realized that a lot of the times I hold a lot of tension in my jaw and my neck. And even if I'm pushing my tongue to the roof of my mouth or maybe my shoulders. And so about 10 to 20 times a day, I'll just stop and listen to my body and re- like stop and breathe and fully relax until that section of my body is no longer there's no tension there and I kind of breathe through that and like that dissipate and along the same lines of that breathing and fully relaxing that part of my body um if like when you start to feel sick and you feel this like kind of tingle in the back of your throat Mm -hmm. um I do this like exercise of feeling like opening that area of my body and sending like positive energy flowing through it Mm -hmm. and I can usually do that to and, and it's gone and I don't get sick Mm-hmm. And so kind of like telling my body to relax and to chill out. Now, if I'm not eating well and if I'm not sleeping well, I can't expect my body to just do what I tell it to. Yeah. <laughs> There's right, lots of right. stuff that I need to do. <laughs> and maybe the body is like, hey, oh, she paid attention to us. She actually thought about us. So, okay, we'll let her off the hook. Because <laughs> a lot of times I feel like our bodies make us get sick when we need to do the deep breathing and the relaxing. And they're like, all right, enough already. We're going to give you this cold now (laughs) or let you get this cold. Exactly. Anyway, all you doctors out there, medical doctors, sorry. This is the the medicine according to Amber and Jen. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) What's your favorite easy meal? Um, It's chicken crock pot recipe. It's super easy. Um, you have a good seasons Italian dressing mix and mix with butter and you put that over the chicken in the crock pot and you cook that on low for a couple hours and then you mix cream cheese and ch- cream of chicken soup and then you mix that all together and you can eat that over rice or on toast or put it in a bun. Um, you just make a veggie and you have dinner for a couple of days if you make a big, big enough pot of it. Do you dump the whole bottle of good seasons Italian dressing in? It's the dry mix. Oh, so okay. Mix the dry mix with the butter. You could probably put an actual Italian seasoning dressing in there, or Italian dressing mix. You just have the oil, oiled stuff. So you just have to adjust for the liquids, I guess. But well, how much butter? Like a stick? Um, you can do a stick, or you can do half a stick if you don't want that much butter. Okay, we can yeah. do this. Yeah, we can do this, ladies. So yummy. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I I think um. I'm going to order myself a timed crock pot. I've not ventured into that awesomeness yet. And this is my first recipe. I'm going to honor you, Amber. Aww. <laughs> yes, I am. Because <laughs> oh, you're my friend. <laughs> All right. Kitchen, favorite kitchen gadget? Um, my favorite kitchen gadget, um, I was going to say my blend tech, but you probably get blenders a lot. So instead, I'm going to say um, my Pampered Chef rice cooker. Oh, Uh, yeah. It cooks fluffy rice perfectly every time. You can even make a cake in it. They showed me that when I bought it at that little party. (laughs) I haven't made a cake in it, but the rice rice is awesome. And you can do brown rice in it, too. You just have to go longer. Yeah. Yummy. Yeah. And a life hack. Um, I give myself, um, I call it a seven-minute challenge. You can do anything for seven minutes. So... um, if you have a messy room or a challenging work task or like you want, you have to plan your meals and you don't want to plan them, like whatever it is that you have to do, um, just set a timer for seven minutes. If you're by yourself, put on some fun music if that's appropriate for whatever task you're doing and just work on that task for seven minutes. Almost all the time, the seven minutes gets you the momentum so that you want to keep going. You feel the progress and that you're 
good to go. And other times it's gotten enough done in seven minutes that you just move on to your next task. Okay. I'm going to take the seven minute shower challenge <laughs> today because it's been a while since I showered. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Amber, what is your formula for being a vibrant, happy woman? Uh, my formula would be to love and to trust myself and to give myself time to create on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. And what happens when you're not creating? What changes? I get grumpy. <laughs> and I get short with <laughs> yeah. my kids and yeah. I get uh, start to self-doubt. Um, mm -hmm. I just kind of get in the uh, thick of uh, feeling blocked and stuck. Stuck. Yeah. Rigid. Not flowing. Yeah. Yes. Like that. And a challenge to our listeners. Um, I want to challenge everybody listening to go sign up to do something creative, whether it's ceramics or photography, painting, watercolor, whatever it is, because um, it's really going to help them to connect with themselves, connect with others around them, whether it's people in the art activity or just people, other people in their life, their family and friends. And it's going to ignite a passion for life again. Um, so I think just doing something creative, no matter what it is, is going to help no matter what. Yeah. And if they can't find something locally, I would love to have them join us in our virtual community. And where's that again? Womencreateweekly.com forward slash join. Cool. Awesome. Amber, you're the best. I love your authenticity. I, I feel that from you. You have really cool, authentic energy and you're doing good stuff in the world. So thank you for being on the show and sharing it with us. Thank you so much for having me. I love what Amber shared about being creative. Creativity, having the time and the focus to create something, no matter how small, helps us to feel balanced, helps us to feel fulfilled. Well, I will be back later this week with a happy bit talking about five phrases, five mantras I think it's important to teach your kids. Stay tuned for that. And until then, make it a vibrant and happy week. Thanks for listening to the Vibrant Happy Women podcast at www.jenriday.com.